Well, Joe, let's talk about it, man. It's been a hell of a year, man. One year ago, you were fighting in the, on the regional stage. Now you're 2-0 you're and in the UFC looking to pick up another win. What's, what's this year been like for you? It's been awesome. Um, you know, I can't ask for anything, anything more than, than what's been going on for me. And, uh, you know, this, it was, it was, it's like a – for me, it's ups and downs and, you know, valleys and this and, you know, highs and lows. And, uh, but at the end of the day, like, this is the greatest thing that – you know, could ever happen to me, and I'm really excited to be here. Obviously, it's every fighter's dream to be in the UFC. How has it played out versus your expectations in this, in this first year? I mean, are you feeling comfortable? Does it feel like you belong? Yeah, definitely. I know I belong here. It's, you know, that's something that I've known since I was a child. And, uh, you know, it's like I, this is my third fight in UFC, so things are obviously getting better for me. You know, my situation is better, more exposure, you know, Finally getting some recognition, you know, I'm not close to where I, where I want to be and I know I will get there So but as far as now, yeah, it's been it's been pretty good You've been so open and honest this past year with everybody about your journey to get here your, your addiction and everything You had to overcome to get here. I'm curious. I mean How long do you, are you okay with that being the story? You know what I mean? Like that's a part of you and it's yeah. a piece of you And I think it'll something that'll always be you uh -huh. but are you okay with kind of that being the, the, the focus about you, or do you want to get to a point where people just look at you as a fighter, a contender, you know, a, a rising guy? That's a really good question. Um, you know, I think that I, I will forever have to tell my story because I, I'm, you know, short-term goal, become UFC champion, you know, make a great life for myself. Long-term goal is use fighting as a platform to help other people, you know? So um, it's something that I'm always gonna have to tell. And yeah, it sounds like, you know, it's a broken record. Like, oh yeah, we know you're a recovering addict. We know that you have this and that. But, uh, you know, like there's always gonna be suffering people. There's always gonna be people that have gone through the things that I have gone through. So in order for them to see that there's a light at the end of the tu tunnel, I have, to, I have to tell the story over and over. And, and for some people, it probably does get annoying. You know, like, oh, we get it. Like, but like, and for me, sometimes it does too, but, um, I truly believe that that's, you know, my reason for being here is, is to help others. So I'm going to have to tell it, you know, until you guys are sick of me. And then maybe, you know, all those struggling people will, will say, all right, we had enough of this. And then I don't ever have to tell it again. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess in fairness, I mean, you know, it's it's still a part of your daily life, right? I mean, recovery is a, a, a day by day thing. Oh, yeah. yeah I have to uh, do something every day to keep myself from going back to where I was. Uh, you know, there was times where I had periods of abstinence, but I wasn't doing anything to keep me on the road. You know, now I have guardrails set up, and uh, I'm able to, uh, you know, instead of falling off the cliff, I might bounce off the guardrail, but I'll stay in the center at least, you know? Does that, does that count even on fight week? I mean, are there things that you have to do on a daily basis, even on fight week? Oh, yeah. I just got done talking to uh, my AA sponsor. You know, uh, I, you know, I do certain things every day that... You know, for me, it helps me stay grounded, and and uh, you know that's that's my foundation. Without sobriety, there's no UFC, there's no MMA on the local circuit, there's nothing for me. It's either I'm, you know, I'll the way I like use drugs and alcohol, I'll die or or end up in prison. You know, because that's all I've had so far is you know overdoses and institutions. Yeah. So I mean, you're you're okay with this? I think being a platform, like you said, you don't want to necessarily it just encapsulate who you are. I mean, I think you want people to take you serious as you know, talk about your fighting as well. But you're okay with this being a continued platform for you? Oh yeah, 100. percent And um, you know, they they will. See, you know, I, I'm doing really well right now fighting, and I'm only getting better. So you know, they'll they'll be the oh the the MMA side. Jared's a great fighter, and then there's the oh you should hear his backstory and. Look how many people he's helped, and that's that's truly the goal. Have you met people that, since you know you've had the bigger spotlight of the UFC that, that, that reached out to you because they saw you? Oh man, it's been unreal, and it's been overwhelming. People from all over the world have contacted me, and I speak to people on a daily basis. And I was having a conversation yesterday with my coach about this, and you know, people contact me, and it's like I can't turn anyone down. You know, I have to respond. You know, unless it's some nonsense. Right. But. Uh, I mean, like, you know, I opened up a line of communication with people and, you know, if these are six struggling people, like, who am I to, to turn them away, you know? Like, if I, if, in order to keep what I have, I have to give it away. So that's, that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with what's going on. Very cool. All right, let's talk about what's happening inside the cage. Fighting at lightweight. Um, is, is this where you're going to be? Is, is lightweight the future for you? I really, really want to go back down to featherweight. Um, obviously, I had, a, I had a hiccup, you know, when I first got here. Um, 
Never missed weight outside of UFC. I came to UFC and I missed weight. I'm that guy that has to learn. I'm always learning. I'm a student to the game, and and this is the way it is for me. Like, and uh, but I'm better f because of it. But um, I truly believe that I'll be a UFC champion. I also think that I have a better shot at 45, though, at becoming champion. Uh, 55, obviously, the guys are monsters, you know, and you know, so it's like I have to do whatever I can to make the road as easy as possible. If they want to keep me at 55, well, then I have no option, but. My goal is to get back down there. So is it the matchmakers saying no? We're, we're we're only offering you 55 fights for right um, now. Um, I mean that's what they're that's the fights they're giving me. I'm not sure if it's them. If it's if, who, I'm not sure who's telling who to say he's got to stay there. Or, but uh, for now, it looks like I'm here at 55, and uh, hopefully soon you'll see me back down there. Is there any part of you that said you said? I mean, you're fighting monsters. They're bigger guys. But you know, we do hear sometimes people say, "Yeah, but you know, I feel better when I'm not cutting. I'm not draining my body as much." I mean, have there been any positives where you thought, "Well, maybe this is the right place for me"? Definitely. I mean, there's pros and cons to to both weight classes. It's either I suffer for two months and be miserable and not eat anything and get down to 45, which I made weight. I made 45 three times before, um, or you know, feel healthier, eat more, be happier at 55, but now I'm facing guys that are big, definitely bigger than me. You know, the average 55er is bigger than me. I'm 5'8", I got a, I'm not long, it's not like I'm, you know, like I got a huge reach or something. I'm an average size guy. I think I'm like, actually, <clears throat> excuse me, I think I'm, I'm like, I fall between 45 and 55, like I'm perfect for 50. But there is no 50 pound weight. Be a weight catch weight champion of the world, maybe. Yeah, exactly. But that's <laughs> not that's not real. So. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think when they came to you with this matchup with Diego Ferreira? I mean, a guy that's uh, that's been on the sidelines and has been on the sidelines for a reason with the USADA suspension. What was your thought when you when you got this matchup? Uh, I think it's a great matchup for me. Um, not looking past him, sitting on the sidelines means nothing to me. Um, I've sat on the sidelines, come off of injuries, and had great performances. He could be getting better. You know, these last two years, he could have been, who knows, maybe he improved a lot. Um, so I'm not looking past him. I don't care about the whole steroid thing. He, you know, that's something he chose to do. He got caught for it. I'm happy that he's back, you know, and I get to be his, you know, comeback match. So, uh, but stylistically, I think it's a perfect matchup for me. I think his style plays perfectly into mine. And um, you're going to see me with my hand raised. And, you know, I think he's maintained some degree of innocence or that it was a supplement or whatever. But I do wonder, I mean, you say you don't care, it doesn't matter. But, I mean, if you know that somebody was doing something to get an edge, that doesn't concern you at all to say, you know, man, I, I, I want to face somebody on level playing field. No, I mean, I really don't care. Obviously, cheaters, you know, aren't respected. But I fought guys that I know were on steroids in the fight, and I crushed them. So... What does that really mean to me? Nothing. Like, you can do whatever you want, but if you don't have the skills and the heart, then you're not going to get the job done. Yeah, very nice. All right, well, a win here would be big for you. 3-0 uh, would, would be strong. What would come next for you? I mean, uh, i got to imagine what, what Brooklyn, Atlantic City, Utica, there's a bunch of those shows coming up. Or, or Which one stands out to you? I mean, obviously Brooklyn. I live in Queens. I'm in Brooklyn a lot. I train in Manhattan. You know, I used to live in Williamsburg. So it's like, yeah, Brooklyn. AC is also like my second home though for fighting. I fought there like 10 times, I think. I was the champion for CFFC and that's where they hold most of their shows. So it's like, you know, just a, it would be like a going home party for me. But obviously New York is ideal for me. Yep, so one of those cards would definitely make some sense for oh, you. Oh yeah, 100%. Cool, all right, well obviously the first thing you gotta do is pick up a win on Sunday. Yeah. Give us the thought, man. How, how does this thing go down? When you play it out in your mind, how does, how does this thing play out? I see a second round finish, TKO, yeah. I think he's savvy enough to get through the first, but I think, well I know my pressure is too much for 99% of the guys here, so um, I'm gonna come forward, I'm gonna pressure, 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 and he's gonna, he's gonna fold.